So in my group we're interested in trying to track drugs where they come from and particularly looking at uh, the presence of drugs in schools. So this is a device that we've developed for detecting spice and THC in vapes and vape liquids and actually in edibles as well. And the idea is that uh, police forces or other groups can have something like this so that they can test what's coming out of the school. So, you know, Rachel will show us. We know this is one of our spice liquids, for example. Um, it's that unlabeled, unbranded bottle, which is so uh, almost always spice. And we can just squirt a little bit of that material onto a little paper disc here and, and what it's going to do um, is we kind of spread it out on that uh, paper disc a little bit uh, and then it shines a bright work. it shines a bright ultraviolet light on the sample and what we're looking for is what's called the fluorescence of the drug that we then detect so it's going to go through a cycle of checking for spice and THC and then even some other drugs that we kind of look for so you know it takes like 10 30 seconds depending so that bright red light that's come up there that's indicative of it being spice if it was THC it would go purple and then we have other colors for other drugs could you tell us what spice is? Could you sort of explain it? Mm, so spice is a synthetic man-made drug and it was originally developed to try and kind of be a mimic of cannabis, so to work in the same way in the brain that cannabis does. But quite quickly people realised that it carried a lot of risks with it, so it never really became a, a drug that we really use. And it's a drug that we'll now see is really commonly used in prisons and common with people who are homeless. So essentially people um, that are incredibly vulnerable. So it's cheap. And why is it so much more dangerous? What, what's so potent about it? Is it its strength? Yeah, so the way it acts in the brain is a much stronger effect than THC, the psychoactive component of cannabis, acts, it acts in a much stronger way. So it gives rise to uh, symptoms that are much more aggressive. So uh, psychosis and seizures, and it can cause cardiac arrest wow. as well. So it's considered a really uh, risky drug, but particularly it's um, incredibly addictive. So people who use heroin and use spice will say that spice withdrawal is like heroin withdrawal. And so it's an incredibly addictive drug, which, which kind of goes to make it ever more risky, particularly when we start talking about teenagers using it. So how can we protect, you know, if somebody is buying e-liquids mm. online, what should they look out, out for? How, how can they tell that there's spice in that liquid? You know, on social media where you'll see this sold is, it's always called a THC liquid. So, and... If it presents something like this, you know, truly a vape liquid and moves around like a liquid and there's lots of videos of them, it will not be THC, it will be spice. If it's an unlabeled bottle like this, it will be spice, never THC. Another indication I think is the price, you know, if it's maybe 10, 20 pounds for this 10 milliliter bottle, then it'll be spice. Whereas if it's THC, if that's what someone's seeking, then it's going to be much more like a thick oil or a brown, almost like a resin, right? But these kind of true THC pens might be something like £60. How could somebody tell if it's a THC vape? So um, if it's a THC vape, it will almost always actually be in a vape pen. So whereas our spice liquids are going to be usually in a bottle and it's truly a liquid, actually it's usually already in a pen and it's going to be a thick oil or a re almost like a resin that just doesn't move when you turn it upside down. It's often in a branded pen, often with a cannabis symbol or some other allusion to cannabis on it. Um, and the volume's really, really low, so they usually only hold about a millilitre, whereas if we took a pen designed for a liquid, a vape liquid, you know, it's designed for a couple of millilitres, so the volume's much lower. Um, but also, you know, it'll smell strongly of cannabis, so if you're familiar with that smell, it's another easy way to identify these. It's a really expensive product, so only 1% of what we find in schools are THC vapes, uh, because they're about £60 uh, for a, a vape, whereas 13% of what we find is actually spice, just because it's so much vastly cheaper. And what are the side effects mm. of using spice, you it, know, by mistake, you know, like yeah. that? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, they can be quite acute. So uh, psychosis, so really big changes in behaviour, seizures in particular, uh, lots of teenagers collapse after they use it, uh, can have heart problems, um, you know, we have reports of people stop breathing, things like that, so it's really very, very uh, risky. They're illegal, you don't know what the strength is of the THC in them? Yeah, they can, so, so this is an example of a few pens, but 
you really won't know how strong they are and it can vary hugely and of course the stronger it is the riskier it is yeah, to drug. Yeah. Brilliant and can we talk a little bit about I think quite a lot of people are confused now that disposable vapes are banned yeah. um, what the new disposable pods look like mm. and therefore if somebody's using them you know how they can maybe buy the refillable liquids more, mm. more safely yeah so this is an example of these kind of uh, few like uh, devices that have come to replace the true disposables so here this would have been what you would have bought and you just throw it in the bin but now you buy essentially a battery and a set of different pods that you can put in there Right, so sometimes you can actually fill these up with your own liquid again, which is how the spice liquid would be used to fill it up. So the safest choice, if somebody is vaping, that they buy their their e-liquid or anything refillable in as bigger or safer shop as they possibly can. You know, if you really. can. You know, but yeah. of course, they technically shouldn't be serving you because it's still illegal to purchase. Yeah. For, for if somebody's under the age of eighteen. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So in terms of, we know that um, a lot of vapes are given to teenagers mm, yeah. and shared. Yeah. So um, we would like to sort of say that we want teenagers to think almost that sharing a vape is a little bit like drink spiking, yeah. that you can never know what well, you're being is. offered. So what sort of tips do you think we could give? I, th I think that's exactly right. You know, we'll see lots of cases where somebody will offer someone a vape, say, try this, you'll like it, and it's actually spice, and then they collapse. I you know, hear that story a lot, a lot. So peer-to-peer -peer dealing is actually quite common for um, spice. You know, we've certainly seen examples of some vapes where it's a system where you can change the chamber that it vapes. The twist of vapes. Yeah, but yeah. one side's been normal and one side's been spice. And you really worry about that in terms of using that to spike someone because the worry you have is because it makes you, you know, kind of not in your body and can make you collapse, you're really, really vulnerable at that point. Um, so I, I do think of it exactly like spiking. And I think that is that message to say, you know, don't be sharing vapes. Yeah. So especially at parties or yeah. like going off to Freshers Week, outside the pub, yeah. you know, if somebody you've recently met, even yeah. like first dates to be as mindful as you would be with your drink, really. I think if you treat it exactly how you treat drink spiking, treat it in exactly the same way. Okay.